you know, this story has been on my mind for a while. And since I can't shake it, I'm just going to have to talk about it. And this story is concerning J.J. Reddick. Yeah, I said it, J.J. Reddick. You know, J.J. was real up in arms and he gave uh, Kendrick Perkins. Oops, let me, let me greet you guys. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Whatever side of the diaspora that you own, let me welcome you to the mental house with me. Your host, Khadija. Now, I have to do this story because sometimes, you know, my mama used to always say, Khadija, be sure your sins will find you out. And I, I would feel really guilty, whatever I would be doing, because I would know it might not be tonight, but eventually my sins would find me out. Um, and a lot of y'all don't live by that creed, so... It's important that somebody have, sometimes when you have amnesia, people have to bring stuff back to your memory. Now, with J.J. Reddick, I was very insulted when he said uh, there's no racism in sports. And we all know that according to the great scholar, Ph.D., um, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, who said that Every area of our lives is governed by supremacy, from economics, education, entertainment, uh, religion, labor, law, politics, sex, and war. And those nine category categories are filled with the stench of racism. So when I heard the J.J. Reddick say that, and I look at entertainment, sports, you know, uh, the music business, acting, all that's entertainment, where unless you've really been a part of that world, you wouldn't understand some of the stuff that goes on. But you hear actors and actresses talking about the racism and Hollywood. You got sports figures because you saw you saw what happened with Aja. I mean, with uh, Aja. I was gonna say Aja Wilson. You 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 saw what happened to Angel Reed, right? And her counterpart, Caitlin Clark, where it took Caitlin Clark to come back and say, "Listen, I don't roll." I don't roll like that. She was supposed to do that. That's competition. Uh, but unfortunately, there was those that tried to make that that issue. So here we got a situation where Duke's golden boy said that there was no racism in the NBA. And by God, he was a ringleader of racism in the NBA. Yeah, there, I said it, I said it, I said it. And I don't just mean that time when, well, I, because I generally believe him when he said uh, the NBA chink fans a few years ago and everybody got upset about that. It was the Chinese holiday. And he said it was a slip of the tongue. And I actually do believe him. Okay? But this situation here, what no, I believe in it because it was plot and it was planned and it was directed. And I want to make sure the story stays on the forefront. Since he said, no, uh, there's no racism. And like I said, he was the main ring leader of a race problem. In the spring of 2013, I was 27 years old, and I was raising a baby in a two-bedroom apartment uh, for $700 a month. I had, all, it, I had almost a decade of political blogging and commentary under my belt, and for which I was rarely paid, even by media behemoths like townhall.com. I had to expand my writing and horizons in order to supplement my husband's modest income 
as an attorney fresh out of law school. It was time to stop writing for free. So, I took some well-compensated assignments for Gun Magazine, as well as periodicals focused on hunting and hiking. I also started blogging for Live Action, a pro-life media outlet infamous for its undercover um, uh, for its undercover reporting on Planned Parenthood. Say what you will about live action, but at least they pay their writers. I also had an outlet to express my strong yet conflicted feelings on the abortion issue. I was a young woman who, at barely 25, found myself pregnant and single and refused to do the responsible thing. I had my baby. However, the mistreatment I experienced Throughout my pregnancy, complete with job discrimination, judgmental doctors made it a hellish experience. My viewpoint at the end of it all was, it's great when a woman follows her heart and chooses life, but let's not pretend it's all sunshine and roses. Frankly, I often doubted the sincerity of the anti-abortion side. I blanched at the idea of forcing this experience on another woman via the long arm of the law. At live action, I took a special interest in the stories of women who were pressured to abort against their will. And that's when I received an email from a woman named Jess Vanessa Lopez who told me that she had been pregnant with NBA star J.J. Reddick's child. You notice the name I said, Lopez. Okay. He insisted that she abort her child, even making her sign a humiliating abortion contract to discourage any second thoughts. She wasn't famous. She was also a woman of color. As I looked over the documents Vanessa sent to me, I couldn't help feeling outraged for her. 2013 was the year professional sports started going woke. Yet, nobody cared what J.J. Reddick, a clean-cut, handsome, all-American athlete in the fans' eyes, had done to this woman. I was also touched that she reached out to me. And although I warned her that Reddick's star status would virtually guarantee both of us, his victim and the woman telling her story, would be ignored and discarded. Okay. Discredited and the works. If the story got any attention at all. Reddick's camp would probably re respond with a legal threat and a bullshit-ass lawsuit, as I like to call it. Good thing I was a lawyer's wife and knew what to expect from this campaign narcissist, this rampaging narcissist. Luckily for me, the threats never came. Unfortunately for Vanessa, the story remained relegated to a pro-life blog, never gaining the attention it deserved and I filed it away. I'm saving it for later, I thought. Because as a recovering addict myself, I know life gets hard for professional athletes as soon as they retire. Sure, they usually retire with a lot of money. They also have no day job and little to do with their time. There are no more cheering crowds in private planes. As time goes on, Newer, younger players emerge. The fan base often doesn't even recognize them. Some discover their wives married them for the money and the lifestyle. Others find out the wives only plan to put up with his constant partying, philandering, mm. while 
other antics as long as his name was on the roster. But now that he's an aging has-been, mm-mm. She's ready to leave with half his money and full custody of the kids. For others, retirement doesn't have to bring such radical changes in order to be tough. That's why um, many end up at AA meetings and addiction treatment programs. I went through an outpatient program with a man in his late 60s who had been a star player for the Cleveland Browns when my parents were in college. I didn't know his name or his football record, but I appreciated his dad jokes. I went to one AA meeting at a crack of dawn uh, just to hear one member, a black man in his 50s or 60s, share his thoughts on the week's meeting topic. I found him exceptionally insightful and intelligent while also keeping his humility. As we walked out, my sponsor noted that he had learned a lot of life lessons during his time in the NFL. A lot of former athletes are humble, caring people. I just have a feeling that the recently retired J.J. Reddick Hasn't changed a bit. His victim story, which I told in three parts, deserves to be reshared. Now that he's finally experiencing life as someone who doesn't deserve the VIP treatment. Frankly, I hope his youthful antics come back to haunt him. You've probably already heard about the bizarre abortion contract drawn up in 2007 between NBA, NBA player J.J. Reddick and his girlfriend, Vanessa Lopez. The contract stipulated that Lopez would receive $25,000 to abort the child, despite Reddick's denial that the baby was his. Reddick also agreed to stay with Lopez for another year, and that any further contact after that would be considered stalking. No, no, but the story gets even worse. Vanessa apparently signed under the contract under duress hours before her abortion while under the influence of value. Vanessa's abortion documents, which she agreed to release to Jill Static's blog, show that she signed the contract just hours before undergoing a second trimester abortion while 16 to eight week, 18 weeks pregnant. Ugh. What's that, four months? About four or five months? I really had no words to describe the documents and email exchanges between Reddick and his lawyers. So I'll just go with Static's description. Crass and sexist. They required, among other humiliations, that Vanessa to immediately turn over her medical records to prove she was actually pregnant and had gone through with the abortion. Reddick's lawyers demanded that these documents mere hours before she underwent a gruesome DNC procedure in which the fetus is mis dismembered. In the waiting room, Vanessa completed a pre-abortion questionnaire in which she answered she felt confused, sad, and guilty and forced into this. Despite having that knowledge that she was co-horsed, a late-term abortionist, Joshua Perper, performed it anyway. A year later, Vanessa was showing signs of post-traumatic stress disorder. She told me she wanted to have this baby, but he was adamant in his opposition. She thought if she did what he told her to do, he would continue the relationship with her. Um, a close to Vanessa told Stanek, she had no attorney, and she hoped somehow, some way, that by doing this, 
doing what he wanted her to do, she would benefit in the long run. Needless to say, she never heard from J.J. Reddick again. Now, J.J. Reddick, who describes himself on Twitter as a Christian, in my opinion, basically is a disgrace. I reported on a bizarre abortion contract drawn up in 2007 between NBA player J.J. Reddick and his girlfriend, Vanessa Lopez. Just as I reported it, the contract stipulated that Lopez would receive $25,000, abort the child, uh, despite J.J.'s denial that the baby was his. The contract was full of humiliating provisions, such as demands that Lopez be examined by a doctor of Reddick's choice in order to prove that she wasn't lying about the pregnancy or the abortion in the first place. Vanessa Lopez, when the story broke, Reddick responded by taking the low road. Stopping just short of calling her a liar, he claimed that Ms. Lopez did and was never terminated, um, did not and has never terminated a pregnancy of a child fathered by me. He even played the victim, writing, Continue attention to these lies is severely damaging to myself and my family. It was clear he was hoping that Lopez and the reporters covering the story would just shut the hell up and get away. But over that weekend, I received medical records that proved she absolutely was not lying about the abortion and showed that she suffered harassment at the hands of Reddick and his associates afterwards. The first document is from Vanessa's visit to Orlando Emergency Room a week after the gruesome 16 week abortion. Ooh, 16. Oof. 16 week abortion. Anyway, the doc they put down in her records patient is a 28 year old who regrets an abortion that was done nine days ago, the report says. She has been bleeding heavily ever since with a fever of 102 degrees. Vanessa was in so much pain, she couldn't even submit to the exam. The emergency room examiner believed she had retained products, a.k.a. baby body parts, in her uterus and was at risk for sepsis. There is no doubt that Vanessa suffered terribly after her abortion both physically and emotionally. A year afterwards, she sought counseling for uh, symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, which he should have paid for. All the while, J.J. has refused to acknowledge her his involvement in her abortion. Well, Mr. Reddick, the second document she obtained is from the Lake Mary Police Department. In September 2007, they handled Vanessa's complaints of harassing phone calls, which were included racial slurs and death threats. Now, allegedly they was calling her all kinds of, uh, just, you already know. Uh, and that he didn't want no black baby, and he didn't, he didn't want no mixed up baby, and uh, I don't know if y'all heard, ever heard that cousin, uh, nephew Tommy, do the, uh, when the white guy thought that he was having a black baby, he snapped. That's how, allegedly, J.J. Reddick responded. Anyway, they, the police, dealt with complaints of harassing phone calls, which included racial slurs and death threats from Reddick and his brother David, and Reddick's brother-in-law, Russell Cobb. According to the police department, David told Vanessa that, Vanessa that she was a bitch and that he was going to kill her. J.J. Reddick can issue all 
the carefully worded denials he wants. On Twitter, he cleverly worded his statement to deny that he was the father of Lopez's child, but did not did not deny that she had an abortion and he knew about it. But Vanessa Lopez deserves justice. She deserves to tell her story, not only of being abused by J.J. Reddick and his inner circle, but from suffering this abortion that he forced her to get. And as for J.J. Reddick, he has been neither a man nor a Christian about this. Despite prominently declaring himself a Christian on his Twitter page, he's really a disgrace. He's a disgrace to his family, a disgrace to the NBA, and just a disgrace to manhood, for which he deserves a public rebuke. J.J. Reddick is not a victim. Vanessa Lopez and her dead child are. And don't you ever, ever let that go unnoticed. So how you explain your racism there and your brother-in-law and your brother calling this lady every racial slur in the book? How you how you justify that and then say there's no racism in the NBA and you part of it? Get real about it, JJ. Get real about it. I want to know what y'all think about it. You know, and that, um, by the way, uh, who wrote the article was a young lady by the name of Ashley Herzog, okay? And um, I thought it was a very good, she's an activist um, for, and she's a journalist, a novelist, and she really has a soft spot for women who have had abortions in their life. So anyway, with that being said, I want to know what y'all opinion is. If you like what you hear, subscribe and share the, share the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.